Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate his great love for us, his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Word who was at the beginning, was with God and is God. We've heard people talk in a way that they think of themselves as a Christian, doing the right thing. Well, I am a Christian, and I don't lie, like some people, but I will pay you up front, and you better come out. Well, what's wrong with that phrase? And if you don't recall, that was from our last podcast when we were talking about the washing machine tragedy. <clears throat> and that was a response <clears throat> that we got. What is wrong with that scenario when you declare, well, I'm a Christian and I don't lie, but, well, I'll do it you while you're asking me, so you better come out anyway. Sometimes we react like that in many situations, not just washing machine tragedies. First, seek the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Don't boast about being a Christian. Boast about your faith in God and that you trust Him. Otherwise, you're going to make people think that you really rely on yourself. You know, <clears throat> we don't want to show that to others because that's not really who we are. We don't give in, especially when we are standing firmly in the truth. Whatever your problem is, put it in God's hands and trust him and respond in that way. In such everyday life, we must respond differently. This person should have said, I'm sorry, sir, you see it that way, but we did pay you on time and in good faith and we can prove it. We would really like to come, you to come out again since you really know the situation better than anyone having fixed it before. And we'll pay you in good faith as before on time. This is standing in faith and demonstrating our authority. We stand on his truth and thus we can be assured of a good outcome. Amen and amen. Trust the Lord because he will help you. He will help you to find resolve in every situation you face, whether it's a huge catastrophe or even something small. It's through faith and his assurances that we can throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with endurance the race set out before us. Hebrews 12, 1. There is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. The law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Not many Christians know how to live in this radical freedom, which is their birthright. Now keep your mind firmly fixed on Jesus. If you follow the ways of the world, you will descend deeper and deeper into an abyss. Even Christian voices can lead you astray, such as, do this and don't do that. You have to pray this way, or you have to serve this many hours, and you have to give this much money, etc. Dear listeners, we don't demand you do anything but to believe in Jesus. Of course, we suggest this to you, as well as we, had, we talk to our, each other about it, about repentance mm -hmm. and not approving of sin in our life, and in other people's lives. God doesn't. Repentance is healthy, for it leads us to his path, his will, not deeper and farther along in the world's way. Turn to God in everything, and he will direct your path. In this way, you walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. And when you walk according to the Spirit, you will have abundant life. If we live in the flesh, that leaves no path or way to live in the Spirit. Remember Elisha, he turned to God. He left a good life for even a better one because he turned to God. And here it is in 1 Kings 19, verses 19 through 21, the calling of Elisha. And so Elijah departed and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 teams of oxen and he was with the 12th team. Elijah passed him and threw his cloak around him. So Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye, and then I will follow you. Go on back, Elijah replied. 
For what I have, what have I done to you? So Elijah, Elisha turned back from him, took his pair of oxen and slaughtered them. With the oxen's equipment, he cooked the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. And then he set out to follow and serve. Amen. And Luke 9, 62 Jesus declared, no one who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for the kingdom. You know, really, this is an illustration of what just happened to Elisha. In that, if you think about it, if you're a slave to this world, like some people are, always at the (coughs) office, always making deals, buying and selling, marketing, teaching, doctoring, banking, etc. If you've been delivered from being a slave to this world, why would you look back? Turn to God as Elisha, as David, as Ruth, as Esther, as Abraham and Moses. Turn from the past. Turn from what was you. Turn to the path of God that God has for you. It's not a yoke around your neck. It is freeing. It is free indeed. As for yourself, what would you do that would give you joy, peace, and rest all at the same time? then that's what you should be doing, for this is God's way, his path for you. Satan wants to steal that joy, that peace and rest, and he does so by luring you into the world, this fallen one. He is killing you softly with his song. It's the promise you will be somebody someday if you work hard, if you apply yourself, if you practice, if you strive, if you do this first, if you do that, if, 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 why if, because that's all Satan has for you. God has everything for you, and it's not an if promise. You know, everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 15 through 16. So powerful is our God that in the face of problems, trials, and tribulations, He gives us the ability to experience his joy, peace, and rest. Therefore, when you begin to fret, to worry, and to become agitated along life's journey, rebuke yourself, rebuke Satan, and rebuke anyone who tries to steal your joy. Remember, no matter what, it is your kingdom right to experience and enjoy God's joy, peace, and rest. Indeed, the peace of God transcends all understanding. It will guard your heart and your mind in Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, verse 7. And folks, so that is really a very important thing to remember, that we are bombarded with the world's solutions to problems each day. And so many of us, while we trust God, we rarely go to him in prayer and say, Lord, I need a resolution and an answer to this before I make a decision, before I make a move, before I plan something. I want to hear from you. I want some idea if this is your will, if this is not your will. And uh, he will answer you. It may not be in, in, in when you want it or where you want it, but he will answer you in some fashion because he wants us to turn to him for all things and uh, be our father. That's what we want. That's what uh, a father does. So remember, if you live, if you have peace and the peace of God, then you will also begin to hear his voice and you will begin to be able to discern his will for you better than when you are living in conflict and with confusion all around you. And that's where Satan wants you. He wants you confused and in conflict. So so remain in peace and you will have understanding about what God wants. Well, that's all we have for this Lions Table. We hope this has been a blessing to you. As always, please leave a comment and and, and, uh, uh, subscribe to us. And uh, uh, like and subscribe and click that, um, that notification bell if you're on YouTube. And if you're on Rumble, click the Rumble button and subscribe to us. And as always, you can leave your prayer requests behind. We will always pray for your requests. And as always, we hope you will join us again next time.